Hello, welcome to the Sosa NASA One channel. My name is Emmanuel, and on this occasion, we are going to test this small capacitor. This capacitor has the characteristics of giving us almost all the data written on the surface as we can save. As we see here, it is telling me that of 2200 microfarads. Here it tells me that it is 10 volts and it tells me the maximum temperature, 105 degrees C, model brand. And here we can see that this is the negative terminal. That is the negative terminal is marked here. That is the negative terminal. And therefore the positive is this how we can save. Well, we are going to test the capacitor to test it. We need to supply it with energy. For that, we are going to use this small source. This is a source that tablets normally use. It has certain characteristics. You have the crit here, as we can see that it tells me what the input voltage is. It says a power adapter. 100 to 240 volts. That's the feeding. The power is what is supplied here by connecting a power socket frequency of the energy that enters and exits at 5 volts at 2000 milliamps or 2 amps. Since it's 5 volts and this capacitor is 10 volts, we can use it to test the capacitor. What we should never do is to exceed the voltage capacity that the capacitor can store. It is 10 volts, a good idea to put 15 or 20 volts in it because we can damage it to know if the trained person is physically damaged. If this surface, look carefully here, this surface, if we put it like this, we see that it is flat as we see that plane. If here, you see that part inflates, that is, this part of metal protrudes. When put at that angle it protrudes, there it makes it like a belly. There that indicates that the capacitor is physically damaged. If it is also fractured or broken, or if it is inflated, down here it should also be flat. But if we see that black part sticking out, it's damaged. Those are ways to test it, just observe it, but let's test the source. What I'm going to do is plug the source here into an outlet as we can save. Let's see, there it is, it's already connected. So this source has duplex, duplex conductor because it has a positive and negative connected here. The positive is marked with a white line as we can see and the negative is continuously black around as we can see. So it is good to take into account which is the positive and negative because this capacitor has polarity. As we can see the negative is this one. So to test it we must first test the source. I connected it but I don't know if it is working. For that we are going to turn on the multimeter. The on switch is this one. There it is. It's on. Now let's put it where it says voltage to direct current. Since this source converts alternating current to direct current to voltage. So let's then put it on 20 volts. That is the maximum limit I have set for it since the source is 5 volts. Is that limit enough? Now what we're going to do is take the tips of the multimeter, we can see Val, and we're going to take the positive. Well, we're going to take the negative here, and we're going to put the positive here. So the multimeter there should show me the ball, as we can see. keeps constant 5. 2 volts it's 6 volts. Normally the source should supply more voltage than it says at least half a volt 
one more volt then that's okay we are now going to test the capacitor well we are going to test the capacitor now for that what we are going to do is verify the polarity as we can see this is the negative terminal of the capacitor the arrow with intermittent lines tells me that it is the negative here so at the source we locate which is the negative the negative is this the conductor that as we can see is completely black on its surface and the one that has a white line which is this this is the positive so what we're going to do is take the negative terminal which is this and we're going to hold him by the negative leg so we're going to temporarily hold it there and now we're going to hold it look carefully at the positive terminal of the source with the positive terminal of the capacitor we leave it there we are going to put it we are going to put a time there approximately from now on 10 seconds we are going to put it well 10 seconds we are not going to put more time on it let's see there the source is supplying energy to the capacitor the capacitor is 10 volts the source is 5 volts that means that the maximum the maximum voltage that the capacitor is going to have is going to be 5 volts 5.5 volts plus from there it won't be because the source is the maximum it can deliver so the capacitor is going to store it's going to store those 5 volts let's be clear depending on how long we charge it also because the capacitor stores energy it stores an amount of energy over time the longer the time, the more balmational energy to the limit that the source supplies. Let's take that into account. Then we'll wait. As we see, is the source connected? I've got her hooked up here too. Then let's wait a few seconds for it to load. I think that's enough time. Shall I disconnect? Yes, we are going to disconnect it well. We are going to see removed one. We are going to remove the other one now. What is this? Try to ensure that the source terminals do not touch each other so that they do not short circuit. Okay. Now we have the digital multimeter set up. With a voltage measurement limit up to 20 volts. Well, let's now test the voltage that the capacitor stored in the time we gave it. Let's take into account the polarity here to test. We are also going to take the positive goes here, as we can see, and the negative goes here where the white line is. As we can observe well, we see the screen there and we see... As we can see, we have 1,008 volts there. And as we can see, the voltage is constantly decreasing. Therefore, the capacitor is being discharged in a correct way, in a gradual way, since that is the same way that the capacitor was charged. As we can see, then it will decrease until it reaches zero. As we can hear, we have the polarity good in good the positive here and the negative here but the multimeter is showing me a negative sign it shouldn't because the polarity is correct now we're going to reverse the way we're placing the tips of measuring the multimeter on the capacitor to see if that solves the problem well as we can see either the multimeter is wrong or the capacitor is wrong. I suspect more of the capacitor because look, the negative sign disappeared. That means that the capacitor has a small drawback. 
there was a polarity change in the capacitor, that's not a good sign. He's good though, because we've tried him, huh? If it stores portage, but if this is the negative, and I connect the positive on that side, and the negative on this side, it cannot be that the multimeter shows me a positive value, and if I connect it, as it should be correct as it goes, what does it do? Does it show me a negative value there? Does that mean the capacitor? If you have a small problem apparently, because based on physical specifications, they do not match what the multimeter shows me on the screen. And so now we are going to discharge the capacitor. Now I need to discharge it very easy to discharge the capacitor. We only have to put in short circuit. This tip, with this tip, we are going to use this metal segment of the multimeter tip. You can use any metal segment, even up to the same clamp, well by putting it like this in a matter of second. The capacitor has already been discharged, it is already discharged there because it is short. And quits. Now let's try it again with the multimeter as we can. The valve no longer shows me any value on the multimeter screen. And we know that you are connected by the sign because look, it shows me the sign. What to say that that discharge like this is 5 or 10 volts? It's not that important to discharge it, but imagine a capacitor. I'm going to show you a capacitor like this. This is a 220 volt capacitor. As we can see, when this capacitor is charged, it cannot be left charged. It is super dangerous because it can store up to 220 volts. It means that if anyone touches these terminals and this has say 180 volts, it can cause very serious damage to the person. So this one is recommended, like the other, to short circuit it. So he's unloaded. That's why you see that he remained calm, but if he had a charge, I would touch these two ends like this, that would throw a spark. And it would sound like something exploded because of the voltage it has. In the next video, we're going to test, we're going to test this capacitor. Don't miss it. Subscribe. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe here on YouTube and activate the bell. See you next time you can share this video. Stay tuned for the next video where we test a 220 volt capacitor. Subscribe, follow us on Facebook and activate notifications. Share and comment with any questions. Subscribe to our channel Sosa NASA One in English and activate the notification bell to receive the notification every Saturday of new videos.